Good afternoon. Welcome to another Lunch and Learn with Purse Strings. My name is Maggie Nielsen and I'm a partner here at Purse Strings. We're all about doing these lives to share some information, get the wheels turning, get some questions answered. But then if you're thinking about being a stay-at-home parent, if you need a plan for retirement, if you're getting divorced, getting married, whatever it may be, we have top tier financial professionals willing, ready, and able to serve you. We call those our Purse Strings Approved Professionals and Bonnie Mays is one of them. And so we're so excited to have her on today to talk about um, having a one income household and how that's financially feasible and successful. Um, and so before we dive into all of that, Bonnie, could you give us a little intro of who you are and what you do? Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me here today, Maggie. And um, you know, this is a topic near and dear to my heart. And um, I am a financial advisor um, just outside of Topeka, Kansas. I mostly work virtually with clients, although I do have some locally and um, I serve people all across the U.S. And I really enjoy working with just like mainstream Americans, working class and also focus a lot on women and um, LGBTQ members and and just um, communities that have traditionally had a hard time accessing financial help. I try to keep my services affordable and want to be able to help people that have been priced out up until now. I love that. Yeah, I love how you're so Thank inclusive you. of everyone. That's awesome. Um, and so, yeah, we're excited to dive into our conversation today. And if anyone has questions along the way, throw them in the chat. We're happy to answer those. And if you're watching the replay and still have some questions, uh, throw them in the comments and we'll work on coming back to those as well. And so, yeah, Bonnie, I was looking at your profile and you were 15 years as a stay at home parent. So you uh, probably know this very well. Yeah. Um, so it was not the plan at all. And that's what we'll talk about today. Some is like being flexible and, um, you know, adjusting to those changes as you as life unfolds. And, you know, you think, well, maybe we need to take a different direction. So and um, yeah, I went to law school and the plan was for my husband to stay at home with the kids after I was done with law school. But then by the time I was out of law school, he had gotten a couple promotions and was making much better money. And um, it just worked out better for me to be the stay at home parent. And, and then I thought, well, you know, I'll just stay at home until the kids are in school. Right. But um, then we ended up having a special needs child and it just worked out better for us to homeschool our kids. So, um, you know, I ended up taking off 15 years from my career. And then, wow. yeah. I came back deciding to be a financial advisor because then I still have the opportunity to work from home quite a bit and allows me that flexibility to still be home with my kids. Some. Yeah. So how does a couple decide if it's even financially feasible um, for one parent to stay home? Well, that's it, it's a really complicated question. It's a lot yeah. more than you would initially think. Like it isn't just as simple as comparing daycare costs and salary. There's so much more that goes into it. And honestly, before you even get to the financial part, um, it's not, you know, I just want to put out there, it's not strictly a financial decision for a lot of people. Yeah. Like people don't just do it to save money on daycare. You know, there's lots of reasons someone might choose to be a stay at home parent. And, um, you know, my job as a planner is to help them figure out how to make it work. So, um, but, you know, things that you would need to consider are um, if you're giving the stay at home parent, are they going to be giving up any benefits they were getting from their employment? You know, and how much is it going to cost to be added to your partner's health plan if they have yeah. one and that sort of thing? And um, was there any insurance you were getting like life and disability that you need to replace? and setting up retirement accounts so that you make sure you're still saving for your retirement and making sure that's part of the budget and you know people will talk a lot about saving money on commuting and saving money on like workplace lunches things like that but there's a lot more to get into with just like taxes with your benefits making sure that all those things are still taken care of Make sure you're protecting yourself for the future, still making retirement contributions. Um, it's If it's your first child, um, are you making contributions for their future for education yeah. savings? All that. So all those are things that you need to really look at um, when you're working on your budget. And really communication 
is key. And I encourage people to um, really take a deep dive, um, work with an hourly planner for just, yeah. you know, as long as you need to, um, to really figure things out and then frequently check in with each other, like set up weekly meetings, like see how things are going, where you need to adjust. Those are great tips. Yeah, it can be, um, it is more than just that um, daycare, which I know is a huge expense mm -hmm. as it is. It is. Yeah, so some expensive. of those, you know, if the working parent had a lot of great benefits, especially if they had really good health right. insurance or something like that, those are huge aspects as well. Right. Absolutely. And so I know you said that you kind of decided to stay home because your husband got a, you know, a better paying job and you had a child with some special needs. And so um, what, you know, what else kind of went into th this decision and what were some of the impacts, you know, of being a stay at home mom, you know, to the finances or to, you know, the family? Absolutely. So, um, I mean, to be honest, we really do live in a two income world. And so, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there, <laughs> and it can be really challenging to make it work. And so, um, you really have to have your eyes open going into it and be willing to make sacrifices. Um, it's absolutely not something you can just easily do. You'll have to think about a lot of purchases that you may not have really thought much about before, like going out to dinner or like expensive trips or anything like that. You're really going to have to plan out ahead of time. Um, the other thing I'd recommend is really building up your emergency savings before you lose that second income. Um, you know, just making sure that's in place for any big expenses that come out. Because if you're just barely making it month to month, um, what happens when you need to replace a car or, you know, some big expense yeah. comes up, you really need to have plans in place for that as well. And I guarantee you with children, some big yes. expense will <laughs> come up. Like... Emergency room bills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, I mean, there will always be something. Um, yeah. And so it seems like it's a conversation to really start, you know, before you even are having the children, Absolutely. because I know sometimes people have kids and they're like, oh, now I decided that I want to be a stay at home mom, where it's right. like, you know, we need to back into that of that emergency fund, you know, that's just not yeah. doubled in size all of a sudden, or, you know, some of these different moving parts, it's not like a, I'm just going to leave my job. Right. I'll put in my two weeks. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and some parents will think they're going back to work after the birth of the baby and then decide, no, you know, I think I'm going to stay at home instead. And so you kind of need to get creative too. Like, mm -hmm. is it possible to stay at home, but still do some freelance work? Or can you do some remote work and, um, you know, work part-time, you know, there's lots more options now than there used to be. I will say yeah, lots of options for working virtually, or I've seen some parents will kind of work opposite schedules. Like if they're in healthcare or something like one will work one shift and one will work the overnight shift. So someone's always at home with the kids. And there's really a lot of ways to get creative to try and help keep the money coming in because it is yeah, expensive. Those... It is so expensive to raise a family these days. Yeah, yeah. And I know, I mean, you're not living in like a huge big city or anything like right. that. I don't know how some of these families do it in like the heart of New York or something like yeah, that. Um, right. It's a huge expenses. Yeah. And so how can couples uh, set themselves up for su success with a one income household? Um, I'd really, yeah, like I talked about with the emergency fund, really make yeah. sure that's built up and make sure communicating, you are communicating all the time. Um, it can be really difficult for people to talk about money. It's hard for couples to talk about. So that's something you need to make sure that you're comfortable doing and figuring out where bills are going to get paid from and who's responsible for what. And, you know, if you have a baby and you're suddenly like working on three hours of sleep every day or something like know who's taking care of what and who has that responsibility, yeah. you know? Um, it's just a lot to think through, like have things systematized as much as possible so you're not worrying about it. But also, yeah, do you have the regular check-ins and, and make sure that the stay-at-home spouse is um, or partner is being taken care of in terms of like retirement savings. Yeah. Um, they can still contribute to like a spousal IRA, um, using their spouse's income, you know, look into those sort of options. Don't just like let everything go into the working person's 401k. Um, the yeah. stay-at-home spouse should be have their savings too. 
which is also a great tax benefit as well. I mean, helping yeah. with, you know, the spousal for, uh, retirement and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, and so do you have like a certain day you and your partner, you know, sit down and always check in? Did you guys have a certain day of the week? We usually try to do Sunday evenings because okay. then we'd also like go through the calendar for the week and like figuring out who needs to be where and who's taking care of what appointments. And yeah, yeah it's <laughs> like, just that kind of like line planning up, out the week. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so then um, how, you know, stay at home parents, they might then want to re-enter the workforce later. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you kind of discuss that or what are some of those challenges? Yeah. So um, if a parent is wanting to re-enter and um, you can make sure you're staying up on your skills and um, if there's any sort of online classes you can do from home, you know, updating your resume Um explore if there's a way you can like kind of gradually re-enter the workforce mm -hmm. if that's an option and um, part-time or doing freelance work that sort of thing um and then just look at again what makes most sense in terms of benefits in terms of insurance retirement savings all those sort of things the best way to coordinate those between the two spouses and covering of the kids and um, yeah and if you need help um figuring out if it makes sense, you know, absolutely talk to a financial planner on just like an hourly basis is affordable for most people. And so how did you kind of decide to go and become a financial professional and not really go with that legal degree that you are working on um, and kind of get back into the workforce? Well, the one thing law school taught me was I never wanted to be a lawyer. And so <laughs> I... <laughs> I worked in public policy some after law school before we had kids. And then um, I just saw online that K-State was offering this online personal financial planning. And I thought it really um, was the perfect solution for me because I love helping people. Um, I've always kind of been fascinated by finance and educating people about it. And um, it's also, it's a pretty flexible job. So I'm able to yeah. still stay at home with my kids and then it just worked out perfect um also because i finished right when the pandemic started and so i was able to launch my career from home and it's just really worked out well that's awesome yeah um yeah. and it's always interesting yeah because sometimes we do have to get more education or whatever it may be whether we yeah. picked a different route or i mean being home for 15 years you know the technology changes and all the yeah. other things have changed <laughs> so you're like oh i gotta yeah. get back up to speed right absolutely um, but it's nice that you're able to find something that's really you found passion about as well and not yeah. just trying to get a job to make money to pay the bills but something that you yeah. really love to do yeah and it's okay to take that pivot you know like if yeah. you don't think the career you left would work for you any longer you know explore what what else is out there and see if there's something else you can use your experience for and lots of employers will value that time you spent as a stay-at-home parent because they recognize like the skills it takes to run a household and to get, you know, to raise kids. And, you know, it's not looked down upon as much as people think sometimes, mm -hmm. I think. You've got great organization, you know how to stay calm Absolutely. in tough situations, Absolutely. you know how to do, you know, bad clients <laughs> on their bad days, all right. those different things. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so then what are some of like the long-term impacts to a couple's financial health if one person wants to stay home and be, you know, that stay-at-home parent? And um, so the big things I would look at with that generally is you'll see reduced savings, um, mm -hmm. especially for retirement. And then for the stay at home parent, they won't be earning as many social security credits. And so um, it can really affect the amount they're going to get in social security someday. So that's why you really want to make sure that you're still contributing to your retirement. Um, and really know what your plan is for making up for that. Like, can you get into a higher paying job once you do re-enter the workforce? Or how can you make up for those savings that probably were lost during the time you were at home? Because, I mean, even if you're only able to contribute a little bit, it's still, you know, you still want to save what you can. But yeah. the reality is you're not going to be able to save as much um, being a stay-at-home parent, probably. So... Yeah. really look and, at that and then yeah still plan for your future and figure out how that's going to look can you dive in a little bit to the social security credits i always think this mm -hmm. is a thing people don't know enough about um mm -hmm. and and so i would love if you can explain that a little bit more 
Right. So when Social Security is looking at how much you will get paid in retirement, they will take your earnings from the highest um, 35 years you were paid. Um, so if you take off several years or if you don't work for 35 years, then those years will get counted as zeros in your earnings report. And that will bring down the average earnings that they say that you've earned. Um, and it will really bring down your benefit. Um, if you're still married when you're taking Social Security, and this is something you should probably talk to a planner about because there are lots of nuances with Social yeah. Security. But um, you can generally, if half of your spouse's benefit is more than what your own benefit would be, then you're entitled to half of your spouse's benefit. But um, yeah, it will affect you much more than if you'd kept working like that entire time. And no, I don't think that's fair because obviously <laughs> being a stay at home parent is very hard work, but yeah, you don't get credit as far as social security is concerned. Yeah, and we've all, we've all been to school where you get a zero on something and you see how that average yeah. really drops. Really brings um, it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which can be, you know, a bummer, which I get, you know, you're not paid as a stay at home mom, um, but it is still a full time job. So it's that right. weighing there. Um, to get everything to really balance. But I think you gave a lot of great tips of really just keeping, you know, the conversation open, kind of try to prepare with your emergency fund as much as you can. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, look at those benefits that you're giving up and seeing how else you can kind of supplement those. Um, like a big thing we always say is, you know, stay at home moms still need life insurance, even though you're not bringing Absolutely. in an upcome income. Mm -hmm. It's essential. And disability insurance. Like yeah. You would take care of the kids if they got sick or injured. Yeah. Exactly. So and to, so meet with a, you know, financial professional to have these conversations and to really weigh these options. Um, I know not all times we have all this planning time. Um, sometimes, you know, situations push comes to shove and that's what we have to do. Yeah. Um, but I know, you know, somebody like Bonnie can also help you build a plan from there on out, you know, making the best foot forward. Yeah. And so, Bonnie, what are some of the ways you work with your clients? I know you kind of said that you have um you have a lower fee structure or more opportunities for people to kind of work with you. And you keep talking about having someone pay per hour. Can you kind of describe like your different pay structures? Yeah. So I work with people in um, kind of three different areas. So I do financial coaching, which is for people who are really like overwhelmed by debt or not able to meet their expenses each month. Um, and that is just a monthly fee. Um, for financial planning, which is getting into more like planning for the future, you're in a pretty good spot, but making plans for the future. I do that on either an hourly basis or like a project based fee, or I do ongoing planning um, paid by the month as well. And then yeah. I also do investment management, which is charged separately. Awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of people assume that you need that $500,000 to get started and get investing to get that help. And that yeah. is not the case. I know like, a lot of our I have no minimums. I don't require anyone to invest with me. If you just need help and ask questions, there's someone who can help you out. Yeah, and I love that, especially, you know, sometimes getting your budget on track. You're like, why am I paying money when I really have no money? But these right. people like <laughs> save you a ton of money and save your sanity and help right. you sleep at night. So <laughs> all those things are well worth it. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I think we touched on a lot of great information. Is there anything we didn't touch on you want to make sure shared today? I don't think so. Yeah. Communication. That's where it's at. Make sure you yeah. <laughs> don't let money ruin your relationship because yeah, everybody knows the statistics about how that's the number one thing couples fight about. So really get comfortable discussing money before it gets, before you lose that second income. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Thank you, Bonnie, for jumping on today and sharing Thank your you. expertise. Thanks uh, so much for having me. Yeah. Feel free to reach out to Bonnie as her email has been going through the bottom, bonnie at maysfinancial.com. She's also one of our Purse Strings approved professionals, so you could reach out to her off our site, purstrings.co. Um, but yeah, let's jump into the conversation and be financially fearless. Thank you.